we're introducing a new groundbreaking feature to, to Hugsy.green. Let's see. Using my favorite animation here as well. Let's uh, pull the curtain and boom, here it is. The new biodiversity view, the new biodiversity alert feature of Hugsy to know where your biodiversity hotspots are. So let's take a look at this introductory film. Wow, this is so great. And uh, to explain more about this new biodiversity, biodiversity alert feature, I would like to present to you Magnus Tuvendal, our subject matter expert helping us developing this new great feature. Welcome up on stage, Magnus. And Magnus, he has a PhD in sustainability science and natural resource management. You, <laughs> you have been as, uh, working as a researcher at the Stockholm Resilience Center, and right now you're working as uh, an environmental consultant, helping cities to assess urban biodiversity. Great to have you on board, and uh, been so great working together also during almost this full year, preparing for this new launch. I've learned so much. Yeah, great. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And uh, um, to to try to grasp and understand this area, like biodiversity, as we do it here, why, why is it important for cities to, to quantify urban biodiversity? Well, biodiversity is important even in cities, in urban areas, and, and it's important for, for biodiversity's own sake, uh, because uh, biodiversity, you can see it as a metric of health, how healthy is nature? And we want nature in the future in cities, and thus we want healthy nature. We also want biodiversity in cities because from this comes ecosystem services that are very needed in cities. From this we get things like uh, air quality control, we get uh, uh, heat regulation and uh, mental health stress reduction. So it's very important to have these features of ecosystem services in cities where people actually live. Nice. And uh, biodiversity, that's a... Uh, uh has emerged as a really hot topic right now, I would say, in, in from most cities. And so far, biodiversity has mainly been assessed more on a micro level, looking at specific species, species to species biodiversity. But with this feature, we're zooming out to macro level. Why, why is that relevant for cities? What do you say? Well, well it, it's relevant for strategic planning. And, and c in cities, you need to plan for the future. You need, you need to think in the long term. It's very important to go down in the specific to actually do inventories and, and to look what kind of features and, and species you have, but you also need to zoom out. And from this, you can get an understanding of what you have. What, what's, our, what's our natural capital? Where is it and how much do we have? Nice. And, and uh, from your experience working with a lot of cities, how could they benefit from this macro level that we provide in, in the KPIs and maps of Agsi? For... for uh, Biodiversity is very complex. Mm. Th that's the nature of the game. It's, it's complex system theory, it's ecosystem services and ecosystems. It's very mm. complex. And you can get lost in this. But 
you can think of it as you actually have only three things to play with. You have how much nature do I have, the, the quantity, the area. And you want to know what kind of qualities do I have, what are these areas made of, and you want to know how are these areas interconnected within the, the, the larger landscape. So if you work with quality, quantity, and connectedness, there you have the tools for, for benefiting biodiversity in urban areas. Great. And uh, let's come over here. We could look into how this different aspect looked like in, in uh, a few cities, the, the quantity and the connectivity. And let's uh, first turn to Vilnius in Lithuania, one of the cities that we have highlighted before today, but here from a biodiversity perspective. So this is one of the cities with very high nature potential score and nature connectivity score. Um, I think we, we calculated the averages to be around 22%. Mm. And uh, as you can see, Vilnius is way above that, both when it comes to potential and connectivity. What can we say from this? Yeah, we map? can see that from, directly yeah. from the map. We, we see that they are high both on the area of nature in the city. And these, the dark green is areas where we have, uh, where nature is dominating. It's more than 80% vegetation cover in these areas. And we also see that there are this, this landscape is, is highly interconnected. You can pretty much walk through nature in a long walk, uh, and that's, uh, uh, that's, that's rather special in an urban area. You have some, some isolated patches, which is what you would expect yeah. in, in urban areas with lots of buildings and roads, etc. Nice. And, and we're going to look at another example. And in this case, we're flying across the globe to Lima in Peru in Latin America, and uh, uh, Lima has been one of the cities with like more challenging uh, situation when it comes to urban green, uh, mainly due to, of course, their natural circumstances and, and preconditions. Let's look, have a look at their biodiversity map. They're sort of trapped between the ocean on one side and, and uh, mountains on the other side. Uh, yeah, this is on the other side of the scale yeah. of these two metrics. We have low scores of both the area, the na nature potential mm. area, but also low scores of interconnectivity and nature connectivity. Mm. And, and, and we can see that. We have distinct patches, and overall it's not that much. And they are also isolated from each other. Yeah. And uh, so these are two examples, uh, perhaps two extremes more or less, uh, on how the biodiversity can be... be uh, mapped uh, on, on yeah, a map like this. Yeah, and it's important to note that these are the specific conditions in yeah. these two places. You, you have to work with, with what you have and, and the possibilities you have. And, and speaking on that, like, how can you work with this? We have some examples also on how cities can focus their effort to, to uh, yeah, protect or improve hmm. in this. We have an example here from New York City. And uh, tell us what we see. Yeah, so, so when, you, when you zoom out and, and look at the overall landscape, you can find places uh, that are of strategic importance, yeah. where small interventions can have larger effects. And this is one where you have an area, uh, uh, perhaps a small urban forest. Mm. We don't know. We haven't been there. Uh, and it's connecting two larger areas of nature. So by losing that, we would disconnect these two large areas of nature. And that would have a, a sort of a rather relatively uh, large effect for a small intervention. So this spot here would be something to really try to protect. Yeah, it's, it's a vulnerable yeah. point in the landscape. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Another example, flying over the globe again uh, to Stockholm, Sweden. And, and uh, here we can see a lot of good patches, good connectivity. But of course, there's also opportunities. Mm. Yeah, like, like the, first, the, the last example, we have sort of the opposite here, where we have two areas of nature uh, close to each other, but they are not connected. And there you could do an intervention when you actually add something. Perhaps you add city trees, perhaps you add a gr green roof or something. And by that rather small intervention, you can connect. So you can yeah. get a lot of ecological benefits for a small intervention. So that would be a good point to, to start, sort yeah. of. And focus efforts. Thank you, Minus. And, and uh, we, we made a great job. <laughs> Let's uh, also hear from, from the cities to see uh, what their feedback is from this. Mm. But I really would like to thank you for all 
your hard work here and, and I learned a lot and uh, hopefully we can also bring those learnings out to, to our audience here. Mm. Yeah, thanks for being here. It's been a very interesting process this last uh, almost a year. Yes. Uh, and uh, I also look forward to seeing this in use. Yeah. And also getting feedback for the, mm -hmm. the people out there in, the, in these various cities that are actually using this. Yeah, don't be shy. Share your, your insights. Mm. Thank you, Magnus. And uh, with this, uh, we are uh, officially launching this and rolling it out as we speak. So this feature will be able, available to all cities part of Hagsi. So what you can do is understand your biodiversity potential, know where to focus your efforts, and as we also mentioned in the, in the video, this is a fast track for you to start adopting the biodiversity, uh, City Biodiversity Index, uh, which can help you addressing also the qualitative sides of, of urban biodiversity. So that's great, great new addition, new feature, new pack here.